Welcome to this simple acrylic painting using just one brush, three primary colours and some white. So I'm trying to colour match most of the colours in the photograph that I'm going to be using, just using these three colours. So it's a real challenge, but also you can learn so much about colour mixing. So I hope you enjoy this and learn something from it as well. I'm also upcycling a canvas board that I previously used for another painting and I recently did a video about using acrylic primer gesso and this was the little canvas painting that I used the Galleria student Windsor & Newton gesso on so I hope you find this interesting so I'll be testing that out as well. This tutorial is suitable for beginners so I really hope you enjoy it. I'm Karen Rice and welcome to my acrylic YouTube channel. If you haven't already and you like this tutorial don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you'll get updates of my latest acrylic tutorials. So shall we get started? I'm using one of my own photographs I took a couple of weeks ago with um, as I was walking in the woods um, locally to me here. I just loved it because it had these gorgeous little forget-me-not flowers and lots of gorgeous texture. You're very welcome to use this photograph as a reference if you're going to have a go at this painting. A link for the photograph can be found in the description below along with a detailed materials list. I'm making a stay wet palette so that my acrylics don't dry out. This is baking paper. You can use parchment paper and I'm placing it over a damp um, paper towel, but you could use a J cloth or something like that. You must keep that wet while you're color mixing and painting. And I've just used a plastic box as well. You could use a tray or anything like that. So I hope you found this helpful and it's a process called osmosis. So it keeps your acrylics from drying out. Using a three quarter flat synthetic brush, I'm using three primary colours pink, blue, and yellow. They are quinacridone magenta, cobalt blue, and cadmium yellow. But you can pick your own three primary colours. I'm using white titanium there. I've recycled an ice cream box to um, use as a water pot, and I am also recycling my canvas board that I previously applied Windsor and Newton's Galleria Gesso. So I'll also be sort of testing that out as well because I'm comparing it to the Artist's Acrylic Gesso by Windsor & Newton. So first things first, I'm using my flat brush. I've mixed up some cobalt blue and some green. I'm just going to paint a really simple outline of this composition. I've kept it really simple. It's a great way of warming up as well. So I'm just marking in the tree, just sort of at the base of the tree and the sort of foreground there and also the forget-me-nots. Acrylics I like to work large to small so I'm just blocking in here now with this flat three quarter inch brush mixing up some cobalt blue with some yellow just painting in the greens in the background so just think of it large to small to so these large shapes here just sort of varying the colours as well a little bit more blue maybe a touch more yellow you can just really relax at this stage here just blocking in colours and shapes I've mixed up a little bit of pink and yellow now now I'm trying to make a brown I'm really challenging myself with these three primary colors trying to match the colors that are in the photograph so it is really a challenge but if you mix all three primaries together you do make browns or a version of so I'm going to challenge myself with this as well I'm just mixing up a little bit of green here to paint sort of wet into wet blending it into the right side of the tree where most of the shadow is so just think of large shapes first of all so I've mixed up some more brown now and I'm painting it in the foreground and I'm going to allow my painting to dry So I'm going to start building up now onto this dry painting with my just one three quarter inch flat brush and I'm just painting a little bit of light 
sort of colour in there just to kind of plot things out. I'm adding a little bit of cobalt blue to the yellow now just to make a sort of mid green and I added a pinch of the quinacridone magenta as well, the pink. And I'm just painting this wet on dry onto the tree as well, just building up the shadow on the right hand side. So I have allowed my painting to dry again and I'm mixing some really nice yummy dark colours. Well as dark as I can get using the cobalt blue with a touch of yellow and then if you want to make it even darker add some of the pink which is what I'm doing now. I can't really get it much darker than this. Um, I kind of it's a little bit frustrating because I could have used maybe a phthalo blue or a Prussian blue and I would have got some lovely darks. I may not have got such great forget-me-not colours though for the flowers so you know up to you but I'm using the tip of the brush the side of the brush as you saw I pointed there just half closing my eyes and really just trying to paint these dark marks and shapes. <laughs> As we are just using one brush, I really encourage you to try and create a variety of marks with it. I'm using the tip of the brush, the side of the brush, the flat of the brush, you know, really sort of experiment there, blocking in. You can really challenge yourself with this. And I'm really sort of using the tip of the brush here to create some grasses and then pressing down, making marks. It is such fun, actually. And I think it keeps you very focused because you've just got these three main colours. You're just using one brush and you've just got this small little canvas here. So there's nothing distracting and you can build up this painting, working dark to light large to small and then just building up the lights and details towards the end of the painting and I'm having such fun and I really encourage you to get your acrylics out and have a go. Do try to work dark to light as much as you can. It's not always that easy because there are light areas just tempting you. What I always advise my students is try not to use any white paint for as long as possible in the painting, especially when you're starting out with acrylics. So it makes you think about darks and mid-tones. Obviously, if you're painting a sky, that's a little bit different because you need to do that, but it's a finished thing. But in this instance, try to avoid using white. Just keep thinking about where are those darks, where are those mid-tones and forget about the lights at this stage. The beauty of acrylics is you can just paint over the top afterwards if you need to. If you want to create any light, just think about using the yellow. I'm actually mixing up the pink, the yellow to make orange and then I've added a touch of blue just to create this warm brown colour. I'm sort of scuffling my brush as well to create some more interesting marks as well and just building up the tonal values on the tree. As you saw there, I was just wiping off my brush. Keep rinsing and cleaning your brush during the painting process and changing your water as well, just to keep everything clean so your paints don't get muddy and the colours remain fresh. And try not to paint any details until towards the end of the painting. Try to resist all those lovely bits. Now I'm actually starting to use some white now and I'm adding the white, the pink and the yellow and the blue to create this very neutral light colour that I can see in the foreground. You're probably all breathing a sigh of relief but um, yeah I'm just painting a little bit now the light on the tree I promise you I'll use lots and lots of white but you've got to get that hard work in beforehand the darks and the mid-tones so I'm mixing up some yellow now with some white maybe a tiny touch of blue in there just on the light side of the tree So as you can see here, I'm using more white and I've allowed my painting to dry. So I'm working wet on dry, painting some texture now and marks on the tree 
with a mixture of white, tiny, tiny touch of yellow, pink and blue, really neutralize that those colors down. This is a gorgeous color. It's just white and cobalt blue for these lovely forget-me-nots. So if you want to make them a little tiny bit more blue violet, you can add a touch of pink. I'm just using the corner of my flat three quarter inch brush working wet on dry and just trying to make these marks as random as I can. I mixed up a little bit of white now, cobalt blue and some yellow. It's a really light yellow green and I'm just painting some light now. It's so much fun actually painting the light after you've done all the hard work of you know mixing up and painting those dark and mid-tone colors. So I've allowed my painting to dry again and I'm mixing up some white and yellow and sort of brushing this along quickly to create some texture on the left hand side of this bottom of this tree here to really create some light and also to show the sort of shape and roundness of the plane of the tree to really describe that shape. That's the lovely thing about painting. You've got all these tools that you can use to describe something and to make something look 3D but also look interesting as well so I'm really varying the colors here the light tonal values here and if you go wrong you can always wipe off as well like I'm doing here with a paper towel or I decided to actually print with my paper towel so I'm only using one brush but I'm going to be using other things that I can use to create marks and textures <laughs> So the painting has dried again and I'm really going now for the textures and details. So it's that, I, I call it the business end of the painting where you can really start bringing your painting to life. You can also apply more darks if you need to. I get carried away sometimes with the lights and I lose a little bit of the dark. So go back in and paint those darks if needed. And that was a mixture of the cobalt blue with the pink with a touch of yellow. And I'm painting these dark marks as well through the grasses, through the little forget me not really to create depth in this painting as well again I've allowed the painting to dry I just want to really make this left hand side of the tree really pop forward it's kind of like the focal point along with the forget me not flowers and I really want it to stand out so I'm using some of the yellow now and a lot of the white as well just to create some texture on this tree as well now I am struggling a little bit to get all the colours that I want. So this is a real challenge and that's the challenge to you as well. Just to try and, you know, just paint with three colours and see what happens. So yes, I'd love some black. I'd like a bit of violet actually and some brown and a, and a cold dark blue. But I'm learning so much just using these three colours. <laughs> To bring that tree forward, I'm painting the background slightly lighter as it is in the photograph, but it really creates the depth as well. So I'm trying to be quite creative with the marks as well. So I'm really sort of building up now, getting towards the end of the painting with the lights and details there. More white on that tree. I still want it to sing out and really come forward. So I'm just brushing my um, brush very quickly to create some texture as well. I'm going to put a little bit more colour and light on the forget-me-nots. They looked a little bit kind of like sinking back into the background. So I'm adding um, some cobalt blue and some white. And I'm also placing them elsewhere just to be a little bit more free with them instead of just that little patch. I thought it would look quite nice compositionally as well. Still using that flat three-quarter inch brush working wet on dry. <laughs> I'm creating lots of texture on this tree here as I'm getting towards the finishing line. I'm using the tip of the brush with really what you get to a point in a painting where there's lots of colors on your palette that have stayed wet because I've you know used my, made my stay wet palette, which is brilliant. You can see there's a nice shine on those. That's worked really well. But I'm just varying the marks now on this painting to create the texture. So you can sort of mix up those colors and be really creative. Can you believe I've only used three main colors there? Look at all the colors in my palette. It's amazing. I just love it. So I'm using a very dark 
um, green here for some more darts in the grasses, especially towards the foreground there, really to bring it, bring it forward and to make my painting look a little bit more 3D. But I'm using the tip of my brush also to create some darker grasses in the distance as well. Try to keep smaller marks in the distance, larger, stronger, darker marks in the foreground and that'll create depth for you. Now it was a challenge with these thin grasses and twigs so I've actually used the bottom of my acrylic tube of paint and I'm sort of dipping it into the white paint or whatever colour you fancy and I'm printing with it here and there just to really bring my painting to life. always love to finish my painting off with a spatter. You have to slightly water down your acrylics so that you can actually tap your brush so the acrylic paint can sort of go onto the canvas there. So um, I'm using a variety of colours to spatter with. Just moving my palette out of the way because I just wanted to create a little bit of texture printing with the, with the flat of my brush. So I've used this brush in so many ways. I've had so much fun sort of creating um, and painting this little simple little tutorial just using these three colours, one brush and a little small canvas. It's been so much fun and the um, just a little bit of feedback about the gesso. I use Winsor & Newton's Galleria student gesso and it's been fantastic. I've just really not noticed any difference really. I definitely recommend it. So those of you that did watch the gesso video, these are kind of my findings. I wasn't expecting any less really. Winsor & Newton, whether it's student or artist, are such an excellent brand. So here is the finished painting. One thing that really strikes me is perhaps tonally I don't have enough darks there because that cobalt blue just couldn't, I just couldn't get that dark enough with the pink there and obviously the yellow as well. So yeah, I would have chosen a colder blue and I do advise um, you guys to do that as well if you fancy painting this one. But I really hope you've learned something from it and it inspires you to get your acrylics out and, you know, set yourself some challenges and to see how you get on. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you'd like to see more like it, don't forget, if you haven't already, to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. Thank you again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.